ask Vince Santini if you'd come up and lead us in our pledges. Thank you so much. Thank you, North Shore, for uh, hosting this amazing event. And if you don't mind, patriots uh, joining me in honoring our country and our great state. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now the greatest state in the union. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas. One, one state, state under God, one, one and indivisible. Thank you, Ms. At this time, I would like to introduce um, the officers of the North Shore Republican Women that are here. Of course, uh, as I said, Chrissy Tatum's not able to be here tonight. She is our president. Our first vice president is Stephanie Collins. She's also not able to be here tonight. But we do appreciate all their hard work. And Sherry Fox is our third vice president. And if you're here, stand up so you can be recognized. Judy Love is our second, I'm sorry, Judy Love is our second vice president. Sherry Fox is our third vice president. Sharon Laster is our secretary. And Lee Billingsley is our treasurer. So we've done a lot of hard work to get this together. And we appreciate all the work. We have elected officials that are not on the ballot for 2022, and then I'm going to tell you the ones that were here tonight. Senator Don Buckingham, Sarah Countryman is Mayor of Montgomery, Scott Moore, Congo ISD, Audrey Young, State Board of Education District 8, Lisa Machart, I'm sorry, I can't read the writing to the judge, Lisa Machart. My 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 221st District Court. We have Senator Brandon Creighton, uh, who I think he left. He was here. Melissa Miller, District Clerk. Melanie Bush, County Treasurer. Judge Gibson Team, 457th District Court. Bill Grant, Judge, 9th District Court. Mark Keogh, Montgomery County Judge. Lisa, you have to more. Judge elect uh, Charlene Valdez, County Court at Law Number 6. Sid Miller, Architectural Commissioner. Agricultural Commissioner. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I'm trying to read this so fast. I need to slow down. Tammy Ray, Tax Assessor Collector. <laughs> Brent Ligon, District Attorney. <laughs> Scott Goldman, Chief Justice, 9th District. <laughs> All right, and unopposed candidates on the ballot. Some of these. Um, Maybe you're, because of redistricting, redistric some of these are, maybe you might be in District 6 or District 8 this, at this time. Dr. Audrey Young, State Board Education District 8. <laughs> Judge Lisa Machoff, <laughs> 221st District Court. Melanie Bush, Country, uh, County Treasurer. Melissa Miller, District Clerk. <laughs> Charlene Valdez, County Court at Law Number 6, <laughs> Judge Number 6. Okay. Congressional District 8 candidates. Uh, congressional candidates who were here tonight but may have had to leave because they were doing something over in the Woodlands. We have uh, Christian Collins, who was here. Is he still here? No. Christian no. Collins, Jonathan Hullahan, Morgan Luttrell, Dan McCohen, McCann, 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 Mike Phillips, Jessica Willing. He's here. <laughs> Jessica Willington and Taylor Witcher. At this time, I'm going to introduce Dorothy Woodall. She is going to be our timekeeper tonight, and she is going to explain the rules. And I don't bite. <laughs> yes, she does. <laughs> First of all, I want to say how marvelous it is to see so many of you here. I am so pleased that we have so many voters who want to become informed. 
And that's what we want in this county is informed voters. So thank you so much for being here. Especially we would like to thank our candidates. You know, for someone to put themselves forth as a candidate for an office in either your local or state or federal elections is truly remarkable to me. So, to each of you, I'd like to say thank you for putting yourself out there. It is not an easy task, and we are so fortunate in the county of Montgomery to have such qualified and experienced people who are willing to put themselves out there and say, I can do this job. I think we are the most lucky people you've ever seen. There isn't a single one who we might elect who would not do the job great. So thank you all for being here so much. Because we have so many candidates, we are only going to allow them to speak for two minutes. And if you've ever had the opportunity to speak in front of a crowd, two minutes is not very long. So I am going to inform you when you uh, punch the gut and the timer, when your time begins, when you start speaking, and I will show you when you have 60 seconds. Then I will show you when you have 30 seconds. And the next thing will be out of time, so finish your sentence. And if you're still talking, I will ring the bell. And if you continue to talk, I'll come take the microphone. <laughs> Thank you, Dorothy. The candidates uh, are going to be in the order that they are on the ballot. And we are going to start now. Let's get started. The first one is Governor. I don't know if Danny Harrison did. Danny Harrison ever show up? Um, Lieutenant Governor Danielle Miller, Tracy Bradford, Attorney General Eva Guzman, and Louis Gomer. If you want to go ahead and come up and, and bring your name tag with you that's on the back of your chair. I was looking for Danielle. I don't know where, where she's at. Oh, Daniel. Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I haven't met all of you, so I do apologize. Don't worry. Um, first up, who are we going to have up first? Guess who's up first? Danielle. Step up in here. You just walk around and just breathe. Howdy. Howdy. Oh, that won't do. Let's try it again. Howdy, Montgomery County. Howdy. And it is so good to be back here in the absolute reddest county in Texas. With a standing for all other counties. My name is Daniel Miller, not Danielle, although according to uh, Democrats, I can identify as that. It would be totally fine, right? My name is Daniel Miller, and I'm a sixth generation Texan. I'm a technology consultant and business owner. And I am running to be your next lieutenant governor for the great state of Texas. Now, most importantly, many of you probably know me from the 15 years of service that I have given for an organization called the Texas Nationalist Movement that has worked tirelessly to give Texans the right to live in a free and independent state. And this work has led me into some of the toughest fights and battles against the federal government that you could possibly imagine. But what do we do when we don't have proper leadership right here in Texas? What do we do when the federal government onslaught comes and no one is there to be our standard bearer, to be the firewall against that? What are we supposed to do when we have leadership that has promised to reduce property taxes and secure the border? And none of those things have been done. Well, I'll tell you what I did. I stepped up to the plate and said that if they won't do the job, that I'll step up and be your champion, your voice, and your firewall against a federal government that's out of control. So I am in this race not to make a statement, but to take back the people's house for us, 
to take back the Senate for us because I believe in Article 1, Section 2 of the Texas Constitution when it says that all political power is inherent in the people. It is absolutely past time that the power be returned to you, that you be given a seat in your capital, and that we stand up for Texas. I encourage your support, and thank you so much. Visit our website at our table, DanielOmiller.com. Thank you. Daniel, it's a hard act to follow. <laughs> Hi, my name is Tracy Bradford, and I'm also running for Lieutenant Governor, and thank you so much for being out here. Come with I got an extra few no, seconds. No, I just, I can't turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's technical. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Wait, let me start again. Let's start again, okay? <laughs> yes, two minutes. <laughs> See, I'm a little follower. I'm not <laughs> my apologies. Y'all can take my ring my bell too. Okay. Now you go. I'm Tracy Bradford. I'm running for Lieutenant Governor. Thank you so much for being here tonight, and thank you, ladies, for putting this on. I know this is no small undertaking. I am a wife of 33 years, a mother of seven homeschool kids. We have our youngest here tonight, is still with us. Um, he's my security guard. And we also have three grandbabies, which if you're a grandparent, you know what legacy looks like and how incredible that is. What I've done is I have been um, a grassroots activist, a volunteer for the Voice of the People for the last 14, 15 years. I've gone down to Austin as the president of Dallas Eagle Forum and the president of Texas Eagle Forum since 2013. And we would go for every session, we would go every week, and we would be fighting for the Republican platform, the priorities, and for other issues like the grid, the grid has become a priority. But that was actually an issue I started working on and then at Senator Hall. And so we have been um, pro-life, pro-family. My role now is the national chair for um, Eagle Forum Against Human Trafficking. But why am I doing this and why am I telling you about this? I do not want to run for office. This is not my goal. My goal is to be a grandmother. My goal is to enjoy my family. I've been fighting for a long time. But I realize that it's come to a time where somebody has to stand up and fight for these priorities that you and I have all worked to bring about. These aren't crazy ideas. These are constitutional foundational principles. And I'm ready to do that. I've been working for the last 15 years already, so I'm ready to go down there and make a difference. And I have the faith in Jesus Christ that this state is still a fighting state and we are going to lead this nation. Thank you. Yes. Good evening, everyone. I'm Eva Guzman. I had the great privilege and the honor of serving you on the Supreme Court of Texas for over a decade. And what am I celebrating today? The United States Supreme Court struck down the OSHA mandate. I spent 30 years as a lawyer, 22 in the judiciary. I stepped down from a job that I loved, loved, to step up for the state that I love. I'm married to a retired Houston police officer, 37 years with HPD, Tony, and he's now my bodyguard. Here with me tonight. Texas is hiring a lawyer. I'm Eva Guzman and I'm running for Attorney General because like so many Texans, I see that the one we have has done some good things, but he's put us in a very difficult place. Like so many of you, I am tired of his lack of respect for the office, his failure to walk in integrity. We work for you. And when you trust us to be your top lawyer, <coughs> We need to walk the walk. He lost the Obamacare lawsuit, May of 2021. He lost the Keystone Pipeline lawsuit last week on a technicality, and he's facing a serious FBI investigation. I offer you my reputation for integrity, 22 years deciding the most complex legal questions in the state. You're hiring a lawyer. Hire someone with the credentials, the character and the conservative values. I'll stand up for life. You know we're a Second Amendment family. Don't ask me how many guns my husband has. <laughs> I will stand up for secure elections. 
and I will stand up for the border. I'm the daughter of legal immigrants. Never will I support a lawless border. Eva Guzman.com, thank you from the bottom of my heart for having us here today. Thank you. I'm Louie Gomert, and I've been a member of Congress, and I usually will in with around three-fourths of the vote. If, why would you leave that to run for Attorney General? This was not on my bucket list, but as I saw more and more uh, being neglected that should have been done by a current Attorney General, and then we find out from the allegations of his top seven people about uh, where the affair led to and, and the improprieties, what they say was bribery, abuse of office, and corruption. And look, we know there are corrupt people at the DOJ, and because he's given them an end, they will probably indict him, after, in my opinion, after the primary. Under the election code, 145.036, if someone's indicted after they win the primary, you cannot replace their name on the ballot. I can do a better job, and you don't have to wait to see if he's going to lose the office. When I saw back in end of October, early November, I, I should have looked before, but he went from between 58 and 59 percent of the vote in 2014, one of those was mine, to barely 50. 0.56 in 2018. And when all of this hits the fan about the stuff he's been doing and instead of doing his job, then he's not going to be able to win. And you need somebody that's a fighter because we've got to secure our elections, even though the court of criminal appeals doesn't understand the Constitution and the laws have been passed. We have got to secure the border. And he could have done a lot more about that, and he hasn't. I will. And we've got to protect parents from the Department of Justice. We have got to secure our rights, and I will fight for all of those, and I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we're going to have Texas Land Commissioner. So it's running for Texas Land Commissioner. Incumbent George P. Bush is running for Attorney General, leaving this seat open. We have Dr. John Spears. Don what? Spires? Spears? Spires? Spires? Boy, I need to take a lesson on the names. I'm telling John, I'm <laughs> him. Weston Martinez. He's not here? Okay. Um, Don Nickel. And Ben Armetta. Armetta. I asked you how to say that too, and I still didn't do it right. Okay. So we're going to have uh, Dr. John Spears up, stand up first. I'll let you say your name. You're not the first person to do that. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. John Spires. I'm a surgeon. I'm an attorney. I'm a veteran. How does somebody get to do all those things? My life's dream was to be a surgeon. I went off to medical school, became a surgeon, a general surgeon, a trauma surgeon. I served in the Army Reserve. Was in, in uniform during the first Gulf War. Came to Texas to be a heart surgeon, trained with Dr. Michael Levanky. I did that. Became a heart surgeon. Thought that was what I was going to do for the rest of my life. Got hurt. Let me tell you a secret. Nobody wants a one-handed heart surgeon. You have to regroup. <laughs> My mom and dad said, whatever you do, don't become an attorney. Sorry. <laughs> I did that because I knew that I could help people. I love helping people. For the past few years, my wife and I have been traveling to the state of Texas. My wife's in the back. She is a true Texas woman like many of you here in the North Shore Republican women. She's sweet like tea, but bites like whiskey. <laughs> but we've been traveling the state, listening to people just like you, hearing the concerns of the grassroots, learning what needed to happen. And I looked around the state trying to help identify candidates so that we could lift them up. And I looked at the offices that were open and what was wrong in our government. I recognized that I could make a real difference in the general land office. I could help better manage 13 million acres. I could, well since I've been through three hurricanes and lost my house three times, I think I could deal with disasters. I've worn the uniform, I can serve our veterans, 
I love school children and promoting education as the child of educators. And I can secure our southern border. Every Texan needs to be safe in their home. I am Dr. John Spires running to be your land commissioner. To make a safer and stronger Texas. A Texas that harkens back to that sacred shrine that is managed by the land office. The Alamo. Thank you. John Spires for Texas Land Commission. John Buckingham, and it is a joy and a pleasure to be with you tonight. I am in this race and asking for your vote for Lady Commissioner because Texas needs an experienced conservative fighter to defend our border, defend our history, oil and gas against what the left is trying to do to our state. I am that person. I'm the only one who's held elected office. I can defend this state like only a mom who's defending her children can in this race. We're in tough times. We are in the middle of the spiritual battle for our state, our country, and the world. Because don't be confused. As Texas leads the nation, the nation leads the world. So it all circles back here in Texas. I am humbled. In the Texas Senate, I have been blessed to work with so many people and so many people that I've worked with are standing behind me. People like Donald Trump, Ted Cruz, Dan Patrick, Rick Perry, the real Rick Perry we all know as governor. Um, you know, we are endorsed by Texas Values Homeschool Coalition, NRA, Gun Owners of America. So if you want a proven conservative fighter, I am your girl. Alright. And I just want to say, when you're looking at candidates, they ought to prove it, not just say it. So here are some of my proofs and some of the fights that I've led. I am the reason that our electoral college is still independent because in the middle of my freshman session in the Senate, I headed off the leadership to be sure that our electoral college stayed independent like our founding fathers meant it. I'm the one that threw down the legal challenge to kept the Senate tap out in front of the Alamo and not hidden around back inside. I'm the only one who passed legislation in this session to protect our incredible monuments. I made sure property taxes, all of the, the reforms that we have done, apply to rural Texans, not just urban Texans. If you want an experienced conservative fighter, you want Don Buckingham in this office, I ask you for your vote. Find us at DonBuckingham.com. And God bless you, and may God continue to bless the great state of Texas. Thank you for having us here this evening. Um, my name is Don Minton. Some people call me Judge Don Minton because I get whole elective office. I was a district court judge in El Paso. Uh, for that, I was a West Point graduate and I served in the United States Army. I've done quite a few things. Um, Governor Perry appointed me, not once, twice, to serve on the Texas border and try felony drug cases, people that would try to smuggle drugs from Ciudad Juarez into El Paso. He asked me to serve, I did. The last four years, I've been working as in-house counsel and now uh, acting CFO of a lithium extraction company. Uh, we've taken a company that was bankrupt four years ago and now uh, brought it to 2019 valuation in excess of $40 million, enough to catch the eye of Occidental Petroleum who approached us. We negotiated a great deal and we formed a joint venture and that joint venture is now worth in excess of $100 million. I tell you these things because, uh, as Don said, you want someone that can prove, they can walk the walk of the things that matters. One of the things that matters for your land commissioner is can you negotiate with an oil and gas company? Who of the stages is going to tell you they negotiate with an oil and gas company? I can. Successfully. <laughs> I've held elective office. I've been a judge. I've also been a platoon leader. It's easy to tell people what to do. You're a parent. You know how easy it is to set a rule, to execute, and get it to happen. That's a big difference. I'm a veteran. I care about veterans. Ask your veterans if you're happy with the Texas mortgage option. I bet they say, no, I'm with the VA. I'm going to change that. I'm going to make the Texas loan option first in class better than the VA. And I can tell you why. I'm not a professional politician. I'm not looking at this office for the next office. That's what George P. Bush did. And that's why we don't have $2 billion 
for Hurricane Harvey relief. My parents lost their house. I've walked the walk on all these things that matter for this office. Please vote for Don Minton, General Land Office. Good evening. I first want to thank North Shore Area Republican Women and all of you for coming out tonight. I know you could be anywhere else this evening, but you're not. You're here because you care about Texas, and so do I. My name is Ben Armenta, and I'm working hard every day to earn the votes of Texans to become your next land commissioner. You know, Proverbs 29 says that without a vision, the people will perish. Well, I have a vision. I have a vision that we are going to do right by our Texas veterans. And we're going to reduce the COVID death rate inside our veterans' homes. And we're going to build additional state cemeteries so that Texans don't have to drive 500 miles to see where they lay their, their loved ones to rest. And I have a vision that we are going to protect our history by never ever reimagining the Alamo. And we're going to expand that battleground so that we can display the truth on what happened there in 1836. And I have a vision that we are going to do right by all Texans. And we're going to ensure that when disaster strikes, that you know the land office has your back and gets you the dollars you need to build, rebuild your homes and your schools and your churches and your communities. And you don't have to rely on the bureaucracy of the federal government. I am offering you a choice. A choice to put in office a businessman and an outsider. A chance to say no to career politicians, no to career candidates, and yes to a Texan and an outsider. God bless you. God bless this great state of Texas. My name is Ben Armenta. I have the experience to leave this office, and I look forward to earning your vote over the coming weeks. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you. Next up is Texas Agricultural Commissioner, Kerry Council. And we do apologize, I think we did misspell the, his name on the uh, program, Sid Miller. Then we have Texas Railroad Commissioner, Dwayne Tipton. Tom Slocum, Jr. He is a latecomer, so he may not be on the program, but he is here tonight, we're glad to have him. And Supreme Court Place 9, David J. Okay, I'm going to make a mess of this one. Shake. I did. Yay. Uh, first up, we will have Carrie's counsel. Thank you. I want to thank the, thank the uh, North Shore Ladies Republicans. Thank you for having us out here. I appreciate it. And I want to take my hat off to the veterans. I am a veteran, I'm a disabled veteran, and for without the veterans, we wouldn't be here tonight. So, God bless our veterans. I know we have a lot of veterans who are running for office. I am a veteran. Uh, I'm also a businessman, and I probably taught a lot of your kids. I teach at Blaine College. I've been a professor for 20 years. I teach economics and finance. That's what qualifies me for this. I am not a career politician. I'm an Aggie, I'm a dad, I'm a single dad. Whoop, yeah, I got some whoops, okay. I got a whoop right here in front row, okay. I'm a single dad. One of the things that I was asking, Lovey, what, what is Curie Council? What do we not know about Curie Council? Curie Council is a single dad, and I got custody of my kids. That's how important it is for me to raise these kids. There's not enough dads that are stepping up for this. I am an Aggie, like I said. I'm also a businessman. I started, I'm, I've started myself, and I'm also a rancher. I've got uh, about 200 mama cows over in Brennan. I'm right down the road from y'all. So what's important for y'all <laughs> and where you live is water. And if you look at my push card, please grab one of my push cards. That's one of my highest priorities. What happens when Harris County takes all your water out of Lake Conroe? Oh. <laughs> I've been here. I live here in Brennan. I've seen Lake Conroe overflow, and I've seen it with nothing. If they have their way about it, you're going to lose all of Lake Conroe. I am a fighter for water rights, landowner water rights, everything on top and everything below. That's one of my big, that's one of my big, uh, my big pet peeves. Also, inflationary spending. All the people think that everything at the grocery store, the rich farmers are making, are making a killing out here. There's a big disparity between what we're making and what we get. 
as a, as a farmer and rancher. It's important. Agriculture affects everybody in this room. Mm -hmm. Everybody. And we all found it out in February when we lost our water, when we had to freeze, right? Mm -hmm. So agriculture affects every one of you. My biggest thing also is bringing ethics back to Texas. I am not a career politician. I'm doing this for the love of Texas and the love of God. Thank you, Kerry Council, Council of Cross Texas. Thank you. Well, good evening, Patriots. It's good to be back with you. Uh, I am Commissioner Sid Miller. I am the agriculture, not architectural, agriculture commissioner. <laughs> Here's, here's what you need to know about me. I am pro-life, pro-God, pro-gun, pro-military, pro-business, pro-constitution, pro-Trump, and I'm anti-Joe Biden. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of candidates here tonight, and I like to help the candidates, because this is not easy. So I've got to, I'm just speaking to the candidates. Listen, there's no more important group in Texas than Republican women. If you don't have Republican women, you're, you're not going to get in. So just keep that in mind. Be nice to them. You know, this office that I'm running for typically has just been a, a political stepping stone. You know, Rick Perry helped it and then went on to be Lieutenant Governor and Governor. And Susan Combs used it to launch up for Comptroller. And Todd Staples ran for, for Lieutenant Governor. But I'm going to tell you something. Today, I'm your agriculture commissioner. I'll be your commissioner next week. I'll be your commissioner next month. If you'll re-elect me, I promise I'm going to be your ag commissioner full-time for the next four years. I appreciate your vote. I've got a good record. Check me out. MillerForTexas.com. Catch us on Facebook. Slash Miller for Texas. God bless you. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Dwayne Tipton. I'm running for Texas Railroad Commission. Uh, if you don't know what that is, the Railroad Commission, it really should be called the Oil and Gas Commission because it covers oil, gas, and mining. Uh, the reason I'm running for the, I'm sorry, I stuttered a little bit. The purpose for this commission it regulates is the guiding light for oil and gas in Texas. Uh, my experience covers 18 years of oil and gas after graduating with an engineering degree. I went to work as a Florian, and I worked my way up into the management. From there, I became a subject matter expert for oil and gas and energy. So when it comes to oil and gas and energy, I've either assessed it or I've been a part of a, the operation. So I bring a uniquely, a uniquely qualified skill set to a role that Texas families need. As far as my platform, it's super straightforward. It's Texas families first, Texas energy first, and energy independence. We need to bring this commission back to working for us and for them to realize that there are servants. We've got to get past the point where the Railroad Commission is the last people to know when it comes to what's going on in West Texas. Pipeline leaks. All the sort of issues that oil and gas happens. I, I, I'm not a career politician, you can tell because I'm stumbling as I speak, but I am a man of action. If you elect me, I'm going to get things done for you. The first thing I'll tackle, it'll be the weatherization of the natural gas grid. We keep hearing all these stories about it's ready, it's ready. Well, two weeks ago when it dropped down to 25, we lost 25% of our natural gas infrastructure. There was, it was just gone. The second thing I'm going to do if you elect me is I'm going to overhaul the regulation inspection department of the RRC. It's time that they're brought to the 21st century with big data analysis, trend development, understanding of what's going on out there. Currently, we, the RRC is the last to know. So please, if, I'd love to have your vote. Please support me. I'm not a great public speaker, but I am a man of action. Please vote for me on February 14th. Howdy, folks. <laughs> My name is Tom Slocum. My family moved to Texas in 1880. I'm fifth generation Texas. I'm fourth generation oil and gas. My whole family's worked for Halliburton just about. I'm the only person that hasn't. 
I'm here because we've got major problems with the Railroad Commission. I don't know if y'all are big fans of debt. How many of y'all are fiscal conservatives? Raise your hand. Are you fiscal conservative in here? I know I am. All right. Let me go over the debt real fast. $35 billion is what TxDOT wants to use to re rebuild a new road, uh, FM 1053 over in Pecos County is falling into the ground because TxDOT thought they knew how to plug a well. I plug wells for a living. They messed that up. That's money down the drain. Now they want to spend $35 million of your taxpayer money instead of plugging a well right now. That's number one. That's $35 million. Then we got $200 million. Well, $200 million, where's that from? Well, we got 6,000 orphaned wells of the Railroad Commission. All right? That number hasn't changed. Every year, we plug about 1,400. We get 1,400 taken off. We do two steps forward, two steps back. Because these people in Austin are not fiscally conservative. They really don't care what happens to the money. Uh, what do you mean they're not fiscally conservative? Well, just look at the vote they just had. They just voted to pass on $3.4 billion, billion dollars to you over the next, what, 10, 15 years? I don't know how long that's going to take because we have to bail out natural gas because of the freeze. Now, you tell me, is that fiscally conservative to pass on $3.4 billion to the taxpayers? Who are these people running the show there? If that was Democrats doing that, you hear all day long from Republicans what's going on. So can we afford another $3.4 billion bailout? I don't think so. All right? I work in the field. I don't have a private plane. I don't make a bunch of money. I got steel-toed boots in the truck. I got my hard hat over there on the table. I'm well control certified. I plug wells for a living. I do workovers. I do recompletions. I even drill wells for if you want. And I do this in Texas. I appreciate your vote. Welcome for Texas.com. If you got questions, please come talk to me. I'd love to talk to you. Thank you, people. Good evening, everybody. It's an honor to be here with you tonight. My name is David Schenck. I am running for the Texas Supreme Court, Place 9. The position vacated by our friend Eva Guzman. Let me tell you the important things about me first. I'm a husband. I'm a father to a 10 and 11 year old, and I am a Christian. But it, <laughs> the less important stuff about me is I'm actually a judge. I have been serving as an appellate court justice on the largest intermediate appellate court in the state of Texas for seven years. I have a real record. I raised my hand and I took an oath and I've been following it. And I expect nothing less from everyone else who does the same. I have a real record. I am a conservative. I have walked the walk as well as talked the talk. I am a Republican. I have been a delegate to the Senate Convention, the State Convention, and the National Convention. I'm also highly qualified, just to be direct about it. It's not pleasant for us, some of us to tell ourselves, but I'm going to tell you, I'm proudly a graduate of Baylor Law School here in Texas. I was privileged to be first in my law school class, editor-in-chief of my law review. I left and then worked as a law clerk to the chief judge of the Fifth Circuit, which is the federal court that sits over Texas and several other states. I then went on to run appellate practices at major law firms. I am board certified as an expert in civil appellate law. I left to become deputy attorney general. I ran six divisions of the attorney general's office, including opinions. During that time, I issued the opinions removing Planned Parenthood from the Women's Health Care Program in Texas. I ran the defense of the redistricting programs the last time. While I was in private practice, I wrote the TSRA brief and the Heller decision, the first case to recognize the Second Amendment. I am a real conservative. I have a real record. I welcome you to please study it. David Shank, shankfortexas.com. I'm endorsed by uh, uh, Eagle Forum, uh, Texas Right to Life, and many others. I appreciate it very much, and I ask for your vote. I hope everyone's taken notes on your forums. A lot, lot of good information and a lot of good things going on here. Next up is going to be Texas Court of Criminal Appeals Place 5, Scott Walker and Clint Morgan. And is Mike Wolf here? State Board of Education District 6, uh, District 6 Mike Wolf. We're going to start with uh, Scott Walker. Thank you very much. Again, my name is Scott Walker. 
I'm really proud to be here today. I thank you for having me. I'm a constitutional conservative. I'm an originalist. And I want to answer a little bit of the question that I'm asked a lot. The question is, what does the Court of Criminal Appeals actually do? Well, we're an appellate court. We're the top appellate criminal court in the state of Texas. And one of the things we do is apply our statutes and our constitutions to criminal cases that come before us. Now, there's a lot of people in this country, hopefully not any in this room, that believes that our constitution is a living, breathing document that evolves right along with societal norms. <clears throat> but what do they really mean when they say that? What they really mean is that the Constitution degrades right along with the degradation of our society, our values, and our morals. That's what the Democrats mean when they say that. Their goal is to degrade the Constitution to the point that it's meaningless. They want to cancel the Constitution. They want to cancel our right to keep and bear arms. I don't think there's many people in this room that's going to stand up and let them do that, or lay down and let them do it. They want to cancel our right to decide whether to take an experimental vaccine or not. They want to cancel our right to life. They want to cancel our right to worship the God who created us. So where do I stand? Six years ago, when I campaigned for this office, I promised the voters that I would not legislate from the bench. I would uphold the Constitution at all costs. And I promise you, I will keep that promise. It won't change in the next six years. Uh, hi, you My name is Clint Morgan. I'm a career prosecutor and a candidate for the Court of Criminal Appeals Place Pop. So, the Court of Criminal Appeals in Texas, we have three levels of our judicial system. We've got trial courts, and then we've got 14 courts of appeals spread across this state. You all have a great court here uh, in Beaumont. Above that, for civil cases, there's the Supreme Court, and then for criminal cases, there's the Court of Criminal Appeals. I'm running for the Court of Criminal Appeals because I believe we have a crisis of crime in this state, and I believe we need to confront it the way Republicans confronted the last crisis of crime in the 90s, with law and order. Now, what does that look like for this job? Now, it didn't happen here, but across the state in 2018, Democrats took over all of our big city courts of appeals. That means in Texas, we like to think of this as a nice Republican state, but most criminal defendants, when they appeal their conviction, it goes to a court controlled by Democrats. I believe we need the Court of Criminal Appeals to be productive and vigorous in its application of the law to make sure the law is being applied fairly and uniformly across this state, and it is enforced fairly across this state because that's how we get rid of this crisis of crime. For nine years, I've been the most productive appellate prosecutor in Harris County, probably the most productive in the state of Texas. I've written nearly 400 briefs. I will get this court moving again. Judge Walker, for five years, has been the least productive judge in the recorded history of the court in terms of opinions he has produced. I will get the court moving faster because we need to make sure that we are supervising all of the courts of appeals and the laws are being enforced fairly. I am also a, running as a law and order candidate. I have endorsements from uh, conservative groups, from conservative Republicans of Texas, from Texas Right to Life. I have endorsements from law enforcement, from CLEAP, uh, Combined Law Enforcement Associations of Texas, and the Houston Police Officers Union. I am a career prosecutor. I guarantee you I will respect the rights defendants have, but we're not going to use the court to create new rights for them. We're going to ensure the law is enforced fairly and evenly. My name is Clint Morgan. I'm going to Court of Criminal Appeals. You can find me at ClintTheJudge.com. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Michael Wolf. I'm uh, here tonight to ask for your vote for State Board of Education District 6. And um, I just, in the last year or so, got done serving countywide in Harris County as a Republican Harris County School Trustee. And I believe one of the most overlooked races on the ballot is probably the State Board of Education here in uh, Montgomery and Harris counties. My opponent got elected in 2020. Uh, he's become the one swing 
vote with the Republicans on the State Board of Education. And uh, a few months ago, I found out he went to a Republican club in Houston and said, you can either have a little CRT or a lot of CRT. Well, my state Republican executive committee woman stood up and said, what about no CRT? So that's, that's where I stand. Um, anyways, um, I currently work for the Texas Attorney General's Office as a child support officer where I work every day to protect young people and that's what I want to continue to do on the State Board of Education. I've got two nieces in public schools here in Montgomery County, uh, Lauren age 14 and Addison age 8, so it's very important for me to uh, protect parents' rights and that's exactly what I plan to do on the State Board of Education. I've been involved since I was 15 years old, uh, just about 30 years actually. I've been a delegate to state and national conventions. And uh, I'll say one thing about the uh, Attorney General's race. I think I know, and I'm friends with almost everybody running in that race, and it's going to be hard for me to know who to vote for. But uh, thank you, and I ask for your vote, Mike Wolf, for State Board of Education. We also have uh, Texas 9th District Court of Appeals, place two, Stephanie Hall and Jay Wright. Stephanie. Well, good evening. My name is Stephanie Hall, and I'm running for the 9th Court of Appeals. I want to thank the North Shore Republican Women for putting this together. I am a board member of the Liberty Bells Republican Women, and by personal experience, I know how hard y'all work, and putting this together has been fabulous. I want to thank everybody else for coming out just so that you can learn about all the candidates. It's very appreciated. I'm running for this office. I have 29 years of experience in the legal profession. I have done everything from complex civil litigation. I've done some criminal. I've done appeals. I've done every aspect, guardianship, probate, you name it, I've done it. And so I feel like that I am qualified to do this job. My opinion is, is that the Court of Appeals and any judge really does not need to legislate from the bench. And we do need to be very careful because as Republican conservatives, we think that that's a liberal idea. It is not. There are sometimes conservatives that believe that you can do that also and that you can legislate from the bench. If you hear anybody that says, I want to change this, I want to return to this, you need to think about it because that is not what should happen on the bench. This is not to change the law. You need to be in the legislature if you're going to do that. So I will just tell you that when I decided to run for office, there were three things. I prayed about this for a week, and God gave me these three things. It is about the passion that I have for law. And the reason I have that passion is because it is based on Judeo-Christian principles. If I went to Europe, it would not be that exciting. I am relentlessly pursuing the truth in all that I do. I drive some of my other attorney friends crazy because I want to keep finding what the truth is. And most importantly, I decided to run because I believe more Christians need to go out and they need to run for office and put themselves out there. I just think that's very important. This is my first time to run, but I think it's very important to do that. So I would appreciate your vote. My name is Stephanie Hall. I'm running for the Ninth Court of Appeals. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Stephanie. My name is Jay Wright. And I'm running for the Ninth Court of Appeals for place two. The, what the Court of Appeals does is it hears appeals of trials that take place in the county courts at law and in the district courts in 10 counties. That's from Montgomery County all the way to the Louisiana border. There's 10 counties. And that's where when you have a trial and it gets appealed, whether you're the winner or the loser, is this Ninth Court of Appeals that's going to hear it. Now, why am I running for this? I've been practicing law for 36 years. I have done every kind of case that goes before the Court of Appeals. I started out my first seven years as a prosecutor down in Corpus Christi, and after seven years, I run as Republican for county attorney and came in second place to a Democrat named Carl Woods. And then I went into private practice down there. 
After seven years, I decided to move up with my wife's family into Montgomery County. So for the last 21 years, I've been officing in downtown Conroe. And I have done, continued to do both criminal law, family law, civil lawsuits. I've done over 140 jury trials. I've done over 117 state appeals. I've done federal appeals. I have appealed cases to the United States Supreme Court. And it's in every area of the law that goes before the Ninth Court of Appeals. And that's why I think we need somebody who has experience in, in all these fields of law to come in and review and make sure that the trial courts follow the law, that they upheld the Constitution, which is the most important thing, because I'm a constitutional conservative, what we call an originalist, like Justice Scalia and, and Justice Thomas on the Supreme Court, because I believe our Judeo-Christian values are what made this country more than 200 years ago, and we have strayed from those values, we strayed from those principles, and our rights are being taken away. I'm Jay Wright, and I'm asking for your vote for the Ninth Court of Appeals. Thank you. Thank you. The remaining um, county-wide candidates have no Democratic opponents. We have a uh, county judge up next, Sarah Countryman, Mark Hill, and Billy Gap. Graham. Good evening. My name is Sarah Countryman, and I'm currently running to serve as your next county judge. Montgomery County is such a wonderful place. We have some of the best business owners in this place, and we also have a rich community full of like-minded individuals, as well as law enforcement that's second to none in this great state of Texas. I love our law enforcement. I have had 18 years of success in the high-tech industry. I'm currently in, uh, entering into the last bit of my second term as mayor of the city of Montgomery. I'm a conservative Christian, and I'm a native-born, fifth-generation Texan. I'm running for Montgomery County Judge because I have watched our current county judge backslide in multiple ethical issues in the last three years. Most of you probably remember his accident, September 2020, and subsequent criminal conviction for DWI while driving under the influence of ambient and amphetamines. And this was also sworn by the affidavit of the DPS trooper. And to this day, Mr. Keogh has refused to acknowledge our and our address the amphetamines. He recently responded to the Tea Party questionnaire by saying he was moving forward with no regrets about his accident. No regrets. Does that mean that you have no regrets for harming a member of our law enforcement, totaling one of our law enforcement vehicles, and hurting and, and, and injuring an innocent civilian? What else do you have no regrets over? No regrets of duty taxpayers is non-essential and people losing their job and closing down this county and shutting down businesses, we are paying for your no regrets. Montgomery County deserves better than this. You, the taxpayers here this evening, y'all deserve better than this. It's time to bring accountability and transparency to the county judge seat. That's what I have brought to Montgomery, and that's what I promise that I will bring to you. My name is Sarah Countryman, and I'm running for Montgomery County Judge. Countryman for CountyJudge.com. My name is Mark Keogh, and I am your county judge. You know, when I ran for office, I made some promises to you all. And I can proudly say that every promise that I've made to you, I've kept. You know, the first item of business that I did when I went to the commissioner's court was I cut my salary by 12%. I'm the only Montgomery County employee in three budget cycles that has, either, that has not taken a raise nor a cost of living increase. You know what else I promised? I promised that we would eliminate the tolls on Highway 242. Second time in the history of the state we would have eliminated those tolls. I lowered the tax rate. Bart Sadler, the previous county judge, told me that lowering the tax rate is the first time in the history of the county. In the history of the county. We lowered the, the rate as the appraisals went up to compensate for it so we were able to hit the effective tax rate and the revenue rate. 
But you also remember back, we also promised in, in our contract with Montgomery County that we would keep Montgomery County first. Well, back in March of 2020, you remember? All of a sudden, we had this COVID issue come up. Well, here's what took place. The state of uh, President Trump shut everything down as the government was, uh, the federal government was concerned. Then our local government added, he shut everything down in Texas. Then we turn around and we even see in Florida that um, Governor DeSantis even cut, uh, uh, shut Florida down. We have a hospital ship over in New York, we have a hospital ship over in San Francisco, and then my health district comes to me and says we're going to have 100,000 cases in Montgomery County by the end of April and possibly 1,000 deaths. So we began to say we maybe need to do something, let's check it out. For two weeks we watched the numbers and we realized that the model was in an alternative universe. And as soon as I found out that we were not going to be losing that, amount of people, I turned right around and I fought to open the county, I pulled down my order, I fought with the governor, I fought with the federal government, I fought against mask mandates, I fought against vaccine mandates, and I came up with three mantras, and here they are. You can't have a healthy community without a healthy economy. I live by this. The government should never be in the, the government should never be in the business of choosing winners and losers. And thirdly, God created us for community. We are better together than when we're isolated. My name is Mark Keo. I'm running for county judge. I ask you to vote. Take one of our five years. Thank you. I'm Billy Graff, and I'm ready to be your next county judge. I'm not going to sit here and attack anyone tonight. I want to encourage you. I believe it's time that we had leaders that were encouragers. I believe that in this time, when we are growing at a pace that's unbelievable, that we must prepare for what's coming. We must prepare our infrastructure. I am an infrastructure specialist in regards to disaster relief. The number one responsibility for your county judge actually emergency management. I spend my entire life doing emergency management work. I go into hurricane zones and I help families who have been devastated, counties that have been beat up and run down, and I go in there and I help return houses, I build homes for families and I give it to them at no cost to those families. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that we are supposed to be a service organization. Counties have forgotten that our job is to serve you, the voters. Montgomery County has forgotten that it's supposed to be a service organization. It is not the role of the five men that sit in that court to tell you how to live your life. It is not the role of the county judge to tell you when you can go to work and when you can't go to work. We are a constitutional Texas, yes? yes. If you're proud to be a constitutional Texas, then you need to recognize the fact that no county judge, and no governor, by the way, either, has the right to shut you down tell you you cannot go to work, you cannot go to church, and you do not have the right to spend time with your family on Easter. That's right. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I want to stand before you right now and tell you I'm a constitutional conservative. I will fight for the rights of the Constitution. I will not bend down. I don't care what any other county judge does. I don't care what any governor does. I care what God tells me to do as a Christian, and I care about what your life is going to look like. Because you are more important to me than anything else. I'm Billy Graff and I ask for your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Next up we have a County Court at Law number one judge, John Hayfleet, Brian Kane. County Court at Law number three judge Laura Watson and Amy Tucker. County Court at Law number four judge Echo Hudson and Gary Miller. And we're going to start with uh, John. Well, good evening. My name is John Hayfley, and I'm running for County Court at Law judge of the County Court at Law number one. Who is John Hayfley? I'm a Christian first, I'm a conservative second, and I'm a Republican third. I'm also the only candidate who's a former police officer, I was a police officer for eight years, a former prosecutor, and I now own my own law firm. By the way, I'm also a veteran. 
Last year, President Donald Trump nominated me, and the Senate confirmed me as a Brigadier General in the United States Army Reserve. And I currently serve as a Division Commander of the 100th Division at Fort Knox, Kentucky. County Court of Law Number 1 is a criminal court. It handles criminal misdemeanor cases. It's a countywide election. So why is that important? Because as a criminal court, I have seen the criminal justice system from every angle. I have arrested multiple felons when I was a police officer. I have prosecuted multiple felons as a prosecutor. I have defended multiple felons. I have seen the criminal justice system from every single angle. County Court of Law number one, when I'm elected, will have 2,000 pending cases. Why is that important? Because I have led 3,500 soldiers as a brigade commander. So 2,000 cases is not going to scare me. It's not going to make me nervous. I'm asking for your vote. I'm asking you for vote for experience because it matters. And I'm asking you to vote for leadership because a judge is a leader and it matters. And as your public servant, I want to be the next judge of County Court of Law Number 1. HatefullyForJudge.com, HatefullyForJudge.com. Thank you all very much for coming out. Good evening. Now that I have the mic, we've reached the back row. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Brian Kane, and I am running for judge, County Court at Law Number One. That is a countywide seat, and yes, it handles misdemeanor uh, criminal cases. Uh, I am an attorney. I'm a partner at Griffin and Kane Attorneys, which is a general litigation firm located in downtown Conroe. And I've been a partner there since 2010. I'm a husband and a father. I've been married to my wife, Katie, for 17 years. We have two rambunctious little children, Abigail, who's nine, and Eleanor, who's five. I'm a fourth generation Texan and a native to the Houston area. Um, as I said, I'm a lawyer. I had to go to law school, obviously, but I didn't go to law school right away. I came to that a little bit later. The first thing I tried to do, or the first path I went down, is I uh, actually uh, was mentoring to become an Episcopal priest. After that, I went and got a master's, and I, on the, I was on the path to becoming a an historian and a, and a college professor in, in the field of history. So I bring that up because I'm running because I believe I have the temperament that's necessary to, to hold this job. I didn't go to law school on a whim. It took me years to decide what path I wanted to walk. And that's the kind of temperament that I would I bring to my, uh, my law practice now, and I'll bring to the bench if, if elected. I also bring it up because that's the temperament that I brought to making this decision. I enjoy the practice of law. I enjoy it greatly. I enjoy the camaraderie of my, of my law firm, of other, of other lawyers. John especially. John and I are friends. We're going to be friends after this. So I didn't come to this decision lightly. And I, that's what I wanted to make sure you all understand. I'll be leaving behind my firm if I'm, if I'm elected. But I am asking for your vote. Please visit BrianCain.org. Again, Brian Cain, running for judge, county court at law number one. You ready, Ms. Dorothy? I'm ready. Okay. My name is Laura Watson, and I am running for the judge in county court at law number three because I believe Montgomery County is ready for a change. And I believe that I, that the people of this county deserve that change, and I believe I'm the person to give that to you. I have been a resident of Montgomery County for 25 years, and I've been practicing in Montgomery County as a family law attorney for 18. The last 15 of those years, I've been managing and operating my own law practice right here in Conroe. I believe, and I'm sure what you are going to hear, is that my opponent has been the sitting judge for the last eight and a half years within this court. The rest of the story is, Predominantly all of that time has been served under the direction of someone else. I am the only candidate in this race that has ever stood outside and represented a single person when they walked into that courtroom. Each and every one of you could have been that person, or may well be in the future. Hopefully not. I'm the only candidate in this race that has ever served in the role as the voice of the children. 
I have gone and represented kids in their interests, serving in various roles, and trying, most importantly, to keep those babies out of the middle when good people are on bad behavior in the courtroom. When it comes to what the people I believe need in Montgomery County, they need a judge that's not only qualified, but fair and impartial. I can guarantee you I can give you that. Within my practice that I have been doing, I have been board certified, which even though this court is a family specialization court and incorporates the child welfare court, that makes me more than qualified to be able to steer this ship. The people also need a judge that will be available when they, the people, need it, not when it's convenient to the court. The people of this county deserve access to the court and the court's time. If I'm elected, that will be my, the priority of my issues, is to be sure that that court is managed. Now ladies, I will be missing many of your beautiful faces from some of these meetings, but our priorities to the people are what are the most important. By voting for Laura Watson, I'm sure you there will be access, efficiency, and fairness within this court. This county is ready for a change, and I can give you that. Laura Watson for judge, uh, I'm asking for your vote. Thank you very much. Anytime. All right. Good evening. Uh, thank you, North Shore Republican women and everyone who came out tonight. We really appreciate this. This is a huge crowd, and um, I'm honored to be here. I'm Judge Amy Tucker, and I am the judge for County Court at Law 3. County Court at Law 3 is one of our three uh, specialized family courts, and it's also a highly specialized uh, child protection court. I believe I'm uniquely qualified to continue to be the judge for this court. I have literally lived in a courtroom for the entire 21 years I've been an attorney, a licensed attorney. Half of that I was uh, trying cases as an attorney, and half of that I've been deciding cases as a judge. I've tried every conceivable type of family law case you can imagine, and I've participated in probably over 5,000 CPS hearings. I am also a double board certified in the two specialty areas of this court, child welfare and family law, and I'm one of a tiny percentage of licensed attorneys in the entire state who can say that. I also am the first judge in the history of this county who has specifically requested the CBS docket in its entirety, and I did that because these cases are brutal. These children have been through so much, they have all been traumatized, and I believe they deserve to be in a designated court with a judge who cares about them and who's an expert in the field. I have actually been doing this job for almost a decade as an associate judge and also as a presiding judge. I'm well respected by my professional peers, and I've been endorsed by our esteemed district attorney, Brett Ligon. I am on the way to creating a special place at County Court at Law 3 where we can heal these children from their trauma and give them, a, give them hope, love, and happiness and the best possible chance to live their very best life. Thank you. Hi, good evening. My name is Echo Hudson. I am running for judge of County Court at Law Number 4. County Court at Law Number 4 is a criminal court. It is misdemeanors, and um, it holds a specialty docket for domestic violence cases here in Montgomery County. So Judge Marianne Turner is retiring. It's an open bench. And I am the Chief Prosecutor of the Domestic Violence Division at our Montgomery County District Attorney's Office. I started with our District Attorney, Brett Ligon, who's here tonight and who is endorsing me as well. Um, in 2011, Brett gave me the opportunity to write a grant and to create a specialized domestic violence prosecutor position. I worked in that as the first special prosecutor for domestic violence cases, and I actually worked under Judge Bill Grant, who was also here tonight. He was our first assistant. I did that in a sole capacity for about two and a half years in that domestic violence court, and we started with less than 50% conviction rate in that court. After the first year, I was undefeated at trial. I tried more cases than anyone that year, and I ended up with a 100% conviction rate at trial and a 90% conviction rate in that court, which we have then continued for the past 10 years. So, on a study that was recently released on this court, um, it is one of the most national high-performing courts in the country. 
Montgomery County, County Court of Law number four, is that specialized domestic violence docket. That is my passion. That is what I do. I created it from the prosecution side. I have run it intimately. I have also been the chief prosecutor of all five of Montgomery County Court at Laws throughout my career. I know how to run a docket. I know how to make it efficient. I know how to keep the cost low to the taxpayer while keeping due process for all of the people who are going through our courts. My name is Echo Hudson. I look forward to meeting every one of you and talking with you more about my qualifications and asking for your vote. Thank you so much. Good evening. My name is Gary Miller. I'm also running for County Court Law Number 4. Um, I have been a licensed lawyer for 16 years. Um, I also was a prosecutor. Um, it was in Harris County when it was actually Republican. Uh, it's a big dumb um, So anyway, um, I left um, being a prosecutor in 2008. Um, I've been a private defense attorney ever since then. I am board certified in criminal law. I have tried capital murders, I've tried regular murders, I've tried every case under the sun. Um, I have tried I, I probably north of 50 jury trials. Um, this court is a criminal court, obviously, all right? I have been on both sides for many years. We need someone on this court that's fair, knows both sides, will follow the law, and give everyone a fair chance. Ms. Hudson's very qualified as well. This is a good thing for the county that good candidates are available and putting themselves up. All right, but I'm the only one that's board certified, and I'm the only one that's done both sides and can be fair to everyone involved. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Is it cold in here? Do you think I'm I'm sorry. No control of the thermostat. I'm sorry. Uh, we're almost done. Next up is going to be County Clerk. We have uh, Brandon Steinman and Jane Stewart. And then we're going to be done. Hi. Yes, there Good evening. My name is Brandon Steinman. I'm running for Montgomery County Clerk to replace our retiring incumbent, Mark Turnbull. So I'd like to take a quick minute just to thank Mark for his almost 30 years of service and the North Shore Republican Women for letting us be here this evening. Uh, I'm a native of Montgomery County, was born and raised here, went to Conroe High School, actually started the first high school young Republicans there. Sixth generation Texan, and my family's lived around this area for the last 100 years. My guiding principles in life are faith, family, and the belief in living your government. And I'm excited to say that earlier today, for my efforts to protect the unborn, Texas Right to Life endorsed me. So I'm honored to have that endorsement. <laughs> my entire adult life has been dedicated to public service. And that's why I'm serving you. And that's why I'm running today. Not because I want to be an elected official, but because I love public service and I love Montgomery County. And I want to make sure there's a qualified Republican that will be on the county clerk's office coming forward. Why am I qualified? Really quickly. Uh, last 27 years, I've served you in public service, working for some of our conservative Texas congressmen. Congressman Ted Poe, Congressman Kevin Brady, uh, and Congressman uh, Joe Barton. Sorry to forget that. I also work for Governor Rick Perry in our state's largest airports. I'm the only candidate here that has dealt with multi-million dollar budgets, had to sit in front of the state legislature and defend them line by line, function by function. Uh, I've also uh, handled public information requests. I have handled records retention and had it approved by the Texas State Library and Archives Commission who does that. Uh, I have a good understanding of customer service. Uh, and again, I see I'm already running out of town, so I will tell you on the formal side, Master's of Public Administration, University of Texas at Austin, specializing in, in urban and state affairs management. I'm a graduate of the Texas Governor's Executive Development Program and the Texas Fiscal Officers Academy, which were designed for young executives moving up that are state employees to take over as CEO or as Chief Fiscal Officer for one of our major state agencies, thinking like the Texas Health and Human Services Commission that has thousands and thousands of employees and billion dollar budgets. Um, I'm running also because I'm a conservative Republican. Ever since uh, I was eight years old, inspired by Ronald Reagan, I became a Republican, walked door to door, worked with our Republican women's groups, and have gone to five of the last seven state Republican conventions. I appreciate your time. We'll be fiscally responsible, transparent, and I hope to earn your vote, Montgomery County Clerk. Thank you so much.
evening. Um, wow, last but not least, right? Right. Goodness. <laughs> um, hello, I'm Jean Stewart, and I would like to be your next county clerk. I want to make something clear. I'm not a politician or even a great public speaker. The good news is I don't have to be either of those things to be your county clerk. I have a lot of county elected officials and friends who support me because they know I can do the job. They know my character and my work ethic. When I take office, I will spend the first 60 to 90 days evaluating the employees and processes of this office before I decide if any changes are necessary. My plans to improve the county clerk's office are, number one, I want to improve customer service. Number two, I want to increase the security of your confidential documents that are public record. Number three, I want to improve access and ease of use to all areas of our fast growing county. And number four, I want to improve online access. I've spoken with the Fort Bend County Clerk about several technologies that she has implemented that I believe will be beneficial to us as well. My established relationships with Commissioner's Court will be invaluable in helping to achieve these goals. For example, Commissioner Charlie Riley and I have discussed adding an office in Magnolia, and I have his full support. I have also had discussions with the county IT director regarding technology that can be added to protect your vital information. I have worked for Montgomery County for 14 years. I know the policies and procedures and the computer technologies. I'm great at managing people and conflict resolution. I'm more than qualified to be your next county clerk. Elect me to be your county clerk and together we can make Montgomery County even greater. Remember, I dream of Jeannie and vote Jeannie Stewart for county clerk. Thank you. Thank you. I hope everyone got some good information tonight. You will be at the polls voting. I think early voting starts, what, February 14th, and uh, March 1st is the voting date, so make sure that you're there and voting. We do appreciate you coming out. Thank you so much for your attention. If you want to stay and visit some more, that's fine.